Hi guys, and welcome back to another TechMinds video. So this is the NRSP ST from SDR Play. It's an all-in-one plug and play networked general coverage software defined radio receiver that can cover from one kilohertz right up to two gigahertz. Now I've featured this on the channel a few times now. When it was first released, we took a deep dive into certain use cases, setup and general usage. But there was one feature that I was not really able to test until now. Now more about that in a moment. Let me first provide a quick hardware overview for those of you that have not seen this before. If we just flip it around so we can see the rear panel, this will give you an idea of the NRSP's connectivity. We have a Wi-Fi antenna, a USB-C socket for power, an Ethernet socket for connecting to your home network via cable, there's also a USB socket, another USB-C socket, which is dedicated for updating the flash. There's a reference input for clock source, which is used for further stabilization. And then there are three antenna sockets, which consist of two SMA sockets and one BNC socket. There's also a little earth lug on the far right in case you want to supply an RF earth to the chassis. The three antenna ports there can have different antennas which cater for different frequencies if you wish. For example, you could put an HF wire on the BNC socket and then on antenna A and B, you could have VHF or UHF antennas. The choice is yours. Now, antenna selection is actually performed in software and the supported application for the NRSP is SDR Connect, which is also made by SDR Play. Now I've covered this before in the NRSP release videos, but it's essentially an application which takes the IQ data stream from the NRSP over the network and allows you to tune in and listen to any transmitted signal from one kilohertz to two gigahertz with a maximum bandwidth of 10 megahertz at a time. Now the reason for this video and the feature that I want to show you can be found on the NRSP admin tool, and that's the recording feature or specifically recording schedule. Now this feature allows you to create as many timed recordings as you like, and those recordings can be stored as either an IQ file, which is the entire bandwidth playable at a later time, or as an audio file. What's also impressive is that the scheduled recordings do not even need a computer or SDR Connect software to be running when they take place. You just need a storage area where the NRSP can write those recordings to. So essentially, you can have your antenna connected to the NRSP, powered on, connected to your network, and it will process those scheduled recordings one by one without any need for a computer to be connected. So where do these recordings get stored to? Well, that would be a NAS, or Networked Attached Storage. Within the same NRSP admin tool, under the Storage section, you can actually define an SMB share folder, which of course can be on a NAS. The reason I've not been able to show this feature before was because I did not have a dedicated NAS that I could leave connected to my network all the time. Now this is the Ugreen DXP4800 Plus, and as data storage devices go, this thing is actually quite incredible. It has four bays where you can install four hard drives, Plus it has M.2 NVMe slots underneath for even more storage. One of the other reasons for choosing this model was the fact that it's almost like a mini computer with a Pentium Gold 5 core CPU and it comes with eight gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. As this will sit on my bench, I can also attach other removable storage devices like SD cards or USB thumb drives using the ports on the front. So if I want to take a copy of a file from the NAS drive to a memory stick and then take it with me, I can do it directly on the NAS itself using a web interface or even a mobile app. Now on the rear is where things get interesting as this is another reason why I purchased this particular model. Now I have experimented in the past using a Raspberry Pi as a NAS server, but the transfer speeds were not very fast. But this NAS has two Ethernet ports. One is 2.5 gigabit and the other is 10 gigabit. Now, 10 gigabit routers are expensive, so I opted for a modestly cheap 2.5 gigabit router. But what I can do in the future 
is purchase a 10 gigabit network card and then install that into my computer. And then I could have a direct cable from my PC to the NAS drive. There's one other port to mention on the back and that's the HDMI port, which you can connect up to a 4K TV and play movies directly from the NAS to a TV, not even going over the network. Of course, for me, my use case, I'll most likely not use that feature, at least right now. Now each of the four drive bays on the front can be locked, so you do not accidentally remove while they're in use. The last thing you want is someone ejecting a drive while it's writing data to it. Now removing the cartridges is super simple and you do not need any tools to secure a drive inside. Each cage can extend like this and then you just place the drive in place, lining up the little dimples with where you would normally attach the mounting screws. You can then close the cage and then this is ready to be inserted back into the NAS. If you have four drives, just do it for all four. Personally, I've got two drives here, each four terabytes each. Now, once you have the drives installed, you can just plug it into your network, attach a power supply and then power it on. Now this NAS is completely controlled via a web browser and the first thing you'll need to do is go through the configuration where you can set up an admin user and choose whether the drive system will be set up purely as storage or whether you use a RAID system where the same data is stored on more than one drive in case of failures. Now on this particular NAS, you will need to enable the SMB service so that you can create a network drive accessible from your computer and the NRSPSDR or any other device on the network. Of course, these folders will be secure, so you will need to ensure you remember or note down the username and password to access that network resource. Now, there's quite a bit of information available from this dashboard, including the current system status for things like memory, CPU, and even the GPU. Now, I've never used a NAS like this, so it's actually quite exciting to see all the possibilities that could be performed with this. There's even an app store where you can install different applications, including a virtual machine. For now though, I'll be concentrating on why I got this NAS. And of course, that was to be able to have a central location I could record my IQ recordings from the NRSP SDR receiver. If you do want to connect to a shared folder on the NAS from your Windows computer, then you must map a network drive on Windows. Using the 2.5 gigabit connection provides a nice speed perfect for when I'm backing up my 4K videos. Okay, so back over to the NRSP admin tool. And once logged in, we need to make sure that the storage tab has the details entered for the NAS folder that we just set up. Once you enter the credentials, there is a test button which will attempt to write a test file to the NAS drive. And if successful, you should see this message pop up. So let's perform some little scheduling tasks and demonstrate how this works. So the first thing we need to do is create a profile. Now this is done on the SDR Connect software itself. It's super easy. You simply start SDR Connect, tune to a middle of a band that you want to record, set the sample rate, and then head to the profiles tab. When you create a new profile, a snapshot of the current settings are taken. You can then give that profile a name. Now this is important as we'll need it later when we set up our schedules. One thing to point out here is the higher the sampling rate, the larger the recording file size will be. So if you're only interested in say the 40 meter band, then only select the sample rate, which will cover at least 200 kilohertz and make sure to tune to 7.1 megahertz before creating the profile. Now with two files, you can see here actually recorded the 40 meter band for five minutes each. And one was set to 250K and the larger file was recorded at two mega samples per second. So that just gives you an idea of how sample rates will affect your storage. Now, luckily with the two drives I have installed on my NAS, I have over seven terabytes of free storage available. Okay, so let's set up the system for an overnight session. I will set up a few profiles here, one for 40 meters and one for 20 meters. Remember, this has to be performed on SDR Connect software itself. Once these profiles have been created, we do not actually need SDR Connect to be open anymore, but no harm leaving it open if you want to. 
Now I'm going to set up a few scheduled recordings to take place during the night and early morning, maybe a couple on 40 meters and then a couple on 20 meters. Each schedule can be named, which you enter at the top. You can also set the date and time the schedule will start. You can also specify the duration of how long that recording will be. Now the recording type will either be audio, which will only record the tuned frequency and set modulation in the profile as it will record raw audio. Or you can choose IQ, which will record the entire bandwidth of the selected profile, which you choose at the bottom here. OK, so I'll let this run overnight and come back tomorrow morning. Remember, I'll be turning off my computer and the only two devices that's turned on is the NRSP receiver and the NAS. And here we are navigating to the shared folder on my NAS from my Windows computer. We can see the IQ recordings that were made from those scheduled recordings. So now it's time to go through each one and see if we caught anything exciting. To play back these, you will need to use SDR Connect. And instead of choosing the NRSP as the source, you select File at the bottom, then open the file that you wish to play. Click the play button and SDR Connect will behave like you was listening in real time. You can scan around within the recorded bandwidth, change modulation, adjust filters, enable noise reduction, etc, etc. OK, very good. I'm sure Dave will appreciate also. Back to you, G0AVY-W1MBB, Paul in Springfield. Do you copy Whiskey One, Mike, Bravo, Bravo? All lost charity night. Um, so looking forward for the rains, which... Um Foxtrot Alpha Echo. Uh, lovely to uh, make contact with you there, sir. I, I have got your call sign on that occasion. I believe it's yeah. over there in uh, Sweden. I've got you uh, Firefly 757 there, Sten, over. Uh, name here is Toby, Tango Oscar, Bravo, Yankee, Toby. And uh, operating conditions are a two-element typical pod, about 15 metres in the air and the uh, icon at 76110. If you select the IQ playback tab here, you'll see a progress bar, which you can actually click and drag to essentially scrub through the recording backwards and forwards. Now, if you just leave it, it will just carry on looping if you've got the loop button enabled. Otherwise, you just press the stop button to stop the playback. Now, you may have noticed just above that IQ playback tab, there's actually a manual record feature. And yet you can use this to initiate an audio or IQ recording manually. But you do need to have your computer on SDR Connect running for this manual record feature to work. It's kind of like an ad hoc record feature. Now, I'm never awake super early in the morning to catch that DX. So it was nice to be able to play back a recording from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. where we could hear VK land stomping into the UK. There are many other reasons why you'd want to create scheduled recordings and not having to have a computer running to record these is a fantastic feature to have and most likely overlooked by many. It is important to have a reasonable side storage available, especially if you are recording at a high sample rate for a long time. It's also important to have a fast network to eliminate any network congestion and packet loss while you're recording. Now, I'll leave links down in the video description if you'd like to know more about the NAS that I got for this purpose. Remember, I'm also using it for video storage, so maybe you do not need such high capacity, but it's nice to have that extra space just in case. Having the ability to load on other applications onto the NAS itself is also a bonus. One thing that I do want to try is maybe seeing if I can get Node Red installed. Node Red is quite popular for people that use it to control items in the shack. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Maybe you've learned something, maybe you haven't. If you already use a NAS, let us know what you use it for down in the comments below. Until the next video, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next video.